So it appears the fire has come from this battery charger. You can see the remnants of the battery spread out around the floor. And the initial fire or explosion caused the window to blow out. And then it's caused extensive damage to the rest of the, the unit that we're in. Initial firefighting was done by the manager of the building. It's a good job. And then fire rescue crews come in and extinguish the rest of the blaze. Yes, what we've got here is a essentially a golf buggy, an electric golf buggy that's been turned into a medicab, which has the stretcher going along the side. It's powered by three lithium, uh, large lithium batteries, which are located in underneath the seat area. We should have a battery there, a battery there, and a battery there. As we can see, we've basically got one battery left, and two of the batteries have discharged and created the fire. So. What we've obviously got here, we've got the damage that's created by the uh, lithium batteries, the fires engulf the cart. Uh, we know that it's all up because of the way the tyres are, but if we have a look up the top there, we've actually got spalling of the concrete, which means that there has been enough heat to actually cause the concrete to crack and fall down, which landed on the golf cart as well. As we can see behind us, just located there, where we've actually placed it. This is a job out at Mascot overnight. What we've got is the casing for a fully electric vehicle, uh, heavily impacted by fire. That does appear to be the area of origin. Uh, we've got radiant heat to the other vehicles around it. This vehicle here is actually the one that the battery unit had come out of. Just entering a unit that we had on fire this morning, a number of people evacuated from the complex. Three people rescued off the balcony by firefighters. With the suspected cause, or the probable cause, or the cause being an e-scooter, a lithium powered, a lithium battery powered e-scooter that was being charged. And I'll come down to that, but as you can see, only takes her a matter of minutes for buildings to be destroyed, units to be destroyed, homes to be destroyed. We did have a working smoke alarm, and at the time the people were up as well. They did try first attack firefighting, but the fire was just too intense. Now our investigators are on scene. Two people have been transported to hospital. Here's our area of interest. This e-scooter that was put on charge at about 4 a.m. We're getting a number of these, but this is our area of interest and cause of this fire. You can see here the batteries that have exploded out after what we call thermal runaway, which is an extremely intense, fierce fire. I've just taken you through this area with this unit fire that was caused, ignited by a lithium battery that was on charge with an e-scooter. We are seeing more and more of these fires in the community. They're a great convenience, but they are a risk. We've got to be really careful where we charge these scooters or the bikes. They've got powerful batteries in them, but unfortunately when they go wrong, they can come off with explosive force and without notice. Yeah, so approximately uh, nine o'clock this morning, we've had a uh, call for uh, a house fire. Uh, brigade has, uh, has turned up to find a lithium battery that was on charge that was actually on fire uh, down here on the carpet. 
As you can see behind me, the different marks on the wall is where the battery has actually exploded. Firefighters, uh, with the help of the residents, have been able to take that battery out, put it into a uh, bucket of water, and where it's now been uh, deemed safe. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got the lithium ion battery. It's full of these cylindrical cells, as you can see, and that's got a lithium paste and copper uh, sheeting in it. We've had one of these cells, we don't know which one, explode open and go into what we call thermal runaway. It's then created a lot of heat within the battery and which has caused the other cells to explode. We've got the charger here. The charger has been connected to the, uh, the battery and obviously being charged inside at the time. You can see by the mat that it's on, it's actually created holes in the mat as that uh, battery is heated up and burnt through that mat. Well, a couple of things that Fire and Rescue actually uh, want people to do. So we want all lithium batteries to be charged in a area outside where people are living. And that's the simple reason if it does catch fire, it's not going to burn your house down or cause any problems with people escaping the house. Secondly, we want the chargers and the batteries to be compatible. So whenever you buy a lithium ion battery, that you stick with that charger, that cabling throughout the uh, lifetime of that battery. Uh, the, uh, the last thing that we really want people to make sure that they've got is that they have working smoke alarms within the uh, house at all times 